Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this anatomy lesson I'm going to cover the sternum bone, also called the breast bone. Now I like to call this the necktie bone because not only does it look just like a necktie, but it's also located in the center of the chest, which is where the necktie is located. In fact, the word sternum actually comes from a Greek word that literally means chest. The sternum is classified as a flat bone and it makes up part of your axial skeleton. Now it articulates with the medial ends of your clavicle bone, also called your collarbone, as well as the costal cartilages of your true ribs, which are ribs one through seven. The sternum's long flat shape provides protection for the important organs located within the thoracic cage, and it also provides attachment points for various muscles, such as the pectoralis major muscles and the diaphragm. Now the sternum has three major sections that you need to know for your anatomy exams. You have the manubrium, the body, also called the gladiolus, and the xiphoid process. The letters MBX, just like the Honda motorcycle brand, can help you remember the order of the parts of the sternum from top to bottom. Now the parts of the sternum are named after ancient words that refer to parts of a sword. The manubrium comes from a word that means handle. The gladiolus, which is the body, comes from a word that means sword, and xiphoid comes from an ancient word that means straight sword. And I think this bone looks more like a necktie than a sword, but that's just me. So let's start with the manubrium, which is the quadrangular shaped area located at the superior or upper portion of the sternum. And this part resembles the knot part of a necktie. And there are some important landmarks that you need to know on the manubrium. First, if you look at the superior border, you'll notice a notched area, which is called the jugular notch or the suprasternal notch. And this notch is actually visible on the neck and it can be palpated and used as a landmark. On each side of the jugular notch, we have the clavicular notches, which articulate with the sternal end of the clavicle bones, and that's gonna form the sternoclavicular joint. Ribs one and two are gonna articulate with the manubrium, but rib two is gonna articulate with only a partial facet at the sternal angle, and on the body, there's another little partial facet where it will articulate there. The manubrium attaches to the body of the sternum or the gladiolus at a transverse ridge forming the sternal angle, also known as the angle of Lewis or some people call it the angle of Louis. And this is the point where those second pair of ribs are gonna to attach to the sternum with an articulation at the partial facet or demi facet at the manubrium and a partial facet on the body. Now this sternal angle, which is formed by, again, the manubrium connected to the body at a slight angle, this is an important landmark for nurses and other healthcare professionals because it will help you locate and identify the intercostal space of each rib, which is helpful when locating the apical pulse or for listening to heart or lung sounds during assessments. The apical pulse, for example, is located at the midclavicular line of the fifth intercostal space as demonstrated by Nurse Sarah in our apical pulse assessment video. On each side of the body of the sternum, you'll notice several other facets or notches which allow for the attachment of the costal cartilages of ribs two through seven. However, the seventh facet is usually shared by both the body of the sternum and the xiphoid process in some individuals with each part containing only a partial facet. Now the inferior or lower section of the sternum is called the xiphoid process. And whenever you see the word process in anatomy for a bone, it's just referring to a projection that comes off of a bone. And that's what this little part is. It's a little projection coming off the inferior portion of the sternum. And the xiphoid process is made of cartilage until around middle age, at which point it usually turns into bone. And it is located around the ninth thoracic vertebra. And it allows for the attachment of the seventh rib via the costal cartilage, as well as important muscles such as the diaphragm. The xiphoid process also serves as a very important landmark when performing CPR. And before delivering chest compressions, you need to locate the xiphoid process at the end of the sternum so that you can avoid putting pressure on it during chest compressions. And usually you'll use two fingers to put over the xiphoid process and then your palm will go beside those two fingers and you will actually compress onto the body of the sternum, which is the safest way to perform CPR because that xiphoid process can actually break off and puncture 
um, organs. Okay, so that wraps up this anatomy lesson over the sternum. And we have a free quiz you can take to test your knowledge by clicking the link in the description or comment section below. In addition, we have a whole playlist here on YouTube of anatomy lessons, so you might want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.